Hello and welcome to Bread Theory. My name is Zach, and tonight we are going to be talking about uh, another set of YouTube videos, kind of just whatever we feel like um, on the Soda Stream. Oh, I gotta update that setting for the name, but uh, regardless, I have with me my wife Amanda. Hi. How you doing tonight? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Um, so yeah, I think the first video that we're gonna check out tonight is gonna be from Jimmy Snow. Uh, and we're just going to kind of give our opinions on it and, and pause wherever we see fit. So let's get right to it. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm. Don't get too wild. <laughs> I love like, Jimmy Snow. Yeah. Yep. It's one of Amanda's favorite uh, YouTubers. You'd say mm -hmm. that's pretty accurate, at least in the political realm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He talks about a lot of different stuff, mostly news and, and politics, but uh, he came from the, the atheist YouTube community originally, and so that's kind of his background. Oh, now I had that set up, but it's... Oh, I think we just got to get to the video because it's a blank screen. So here we go. Uh, he's going to be talking about Caitlin Bennett's Sister Spills the Tea, an attack and, and also Attack of the Florida Men. That's the video we're going to be reviewing. I, I haven't seen it yet. I don't think you have either, have you? No, I haven't. Cool. So, so. can we talk about Florida for a minute? Sure, sure. Let, let's bring it back to the, the full so. screen. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you have to say about Florida? Uh, do you guys remember listening to Love Line? And they used to play Germany or Florida. And then you got to call and they'd guess where the crappy story came from. <laughs> if it was Germany or Florida. <laughs> Every single time I hear Florida... Or Germany, for that matter. That's immediately what I go to in my mind. And that show, I miss that show. That should come back. You know what? That 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 was a quality sex education. It was it, for if that. If I regard. ever had one. Right. Um. I I definitely knew a whole lot more about sex than all of my friends in in like junior high and, and even through high school. Mm -hmm. Um. Although I, I I really don't like Adam Carolla anymore. He's turned into kind of a right winger. Not even kind of. Totally a right winger. He was on mm -hmm. cancel the cancel con or canceled tour or something like that with like Dennis Prager and stuff like that. Yeah. Well. Um. So his politics are crap, but but he was entertaining, and Dr. Drew, you know, as as controversial as he's become of a figure as well, at, at least he was pretty open and honest about things when it came to to sex and sex ed and stuff like that. He would never shy away from stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Someone needs to bring that back. Oh, you know what? I think they actually still have a podcast out there somewhere. It's not good enough. Oh, it's not good enough. <laughs> Unless no. it's like blasting in your face 24-7. You, you no, just, I used to use it to fall asleep too. Oh, well, I'm sure you could find it again. Maybe. Anyway, anyway, I'll stop. Um, how were you at Florida Man or or what was the other? German, Germany, Germany or, or Florida. Florida. Yeah. I was very good. Yeah, yeah, you could usually tell the difference. Mm -hmm. You just wait for the word later, Hosen. Uh, oh, th did that come up often? Yeah. I see. I see. I have I a see. terrible sense of humor. You'll learn that as we go on. <laughs> well, let's get into the video now. Let's get into it. Oh, my God. Thank you for bringing a little piece of Abby Shapiro with you to every one of these streams that we do together. You're welcome. It wouldn't be the same without that little pop. Tonight on the Sometime Show, New York is offering full ride scholarships to kids who get vaccinated. And they're also reminding kids to stay six feet away from Governor Cuomo. Then, we've got a lot of stories about Florida. You ever notice Whoa. Oh. they never try to secede though? That's because no one would stop them. Also, a toddler has become the youngest ever member of Mensa, the genius corporation. Her brain is so big that You'd think she would need a Matt Gates head to support it. And finally, Paul Ryan is here to beg Donald Trump for his balls back. All that, except for the last tonight on The Sometime Show. <laughs> He's crawling on the desk, it was funny. What's that? He was crawling on the desk, it was funny. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Any, any thoughts on the opening so far? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. 
Welcome to the Sometime Show. I'm Jimmy Snow. And remember, if you love the show, share the show. And if you click subscribe, a completely undetectable fairy is going to start following you around and increase the number of random pennies on the street you come across by 35%. Holy shit, I'm pretty sure I just figured out how religion was invented. And don't forget, you can support the channel by getting some of our merch designs like these. They'll, oh, like those. They'll not only keep you looking fresh, but they'll also annoy Kim Jong-un. Just just because they exist. They're too Western. Anyway, before we get started, just so you know, tonight we're going to be talking about Caitlin Bennett's sister, Abby Nicole, and the TikToks that she's been making about her sister, Caitlin. I just got to tell you, I am so ready to spill the tea so hard that it'll Not make the British reconsider like rehashing the revolution. Yeah, I don't know anything Consider about Consider rehashing, not yeah. recons... Anyway, but I've before the tea, let's have yeah. something a little more yeah, flame-broiled. That's right. It's time to roast the news. Ohio has officially picked their first million-dollar winner in the vaccination lottery. And not to be outdone, Vaxathon. New York has announced that kids between... Yeah, apparently Ohio has a vaccination lottery. It's like an extra incentive for, like, if you get vaccinated. Or I think even if you've already been vaccinated before the time that they started this thing, you get entered in a lottery. And you can win, I think, like up to like a million dollars or something <laughs> like that. It's just a, an extra way to incentivize people to get the jab. Cool. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I think incentives are a good thing. Sure. I mean, clearly they work to some extent. And I mean, I don't care if it's as small as like Krispy Kreme gives you a donut because you got vaccinated. Yeah. Big whoop. You just got stabbed in the arm with a needle. You should get a donut or a plant. Oh, plant. Oh, I'm sure that would be your option if it was between oh, absolutely. Krispy Kreme or plant. Yeah. As, as, you, as you can see by our exhibit, not a. at all obsessive with plants background. Whatever. No. Our I house mean, is totes Instagrammable, but I've never taken a picture in front of this for Instagram, which is. Well, it sounds like that needs to be part of our day tomorrow. Yeah, hold <laughs> out, guys. Some plants glamour shots. Some planter shots. <laughs> Hashtag planter shots. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, I'm not sorry. 12 and 17 who get immunized before July 7th yeah, can enter a so drawing wait, for 54. 12 and 17, is that just for Pfizer or Pfizer and Moderna have now been approved? Because I thought Moderna was only if they were 16 and older and Pfizer was 12. I'm not even sure which one he's talking about at this point. He just says who get immunized. Hang on, guys. I'm going to go on the internet to find out because okay, I think this is valuable information <laughs> for you. You do some sleuthing rights scholarships to city or state run universities that's right you can enter a lottery to a attend a public institution which should already be free i mean a good point there he was, he was just saying mm -hmm. that's right kids you can enter a lottery uh to get a full ride for a public institution that should already be free <laughs> it's a fair point yeah. like i mean we do have to deal with the, the system as it is right now but it's, it's also important to note that, yeah, there's no reason that public universities shouldn't be free to anyone who can demonstrate that they can uh, get whatever marks to, to get into it, at, at the very least. You know? Yeah, so it looks like... What did you find about the vaccine thing? Pfizer and Moderna can go as low as 12 years. With, oh, they, they rolled it back to 12 no now. And there's no serious um, side effects. What about Johnson & Johnson? Sorry, guys. I just... I have, get, they, have they started the Johnson & Johnson again? They, they had yeah, it's it. back. Oh, it is back. Okay. I wasn't sure. Because the margin for blood clot was so small. So low. It was yeah. like less than 1%, but, it, you know, how everybody is right now. If yeah. somebody gets it, oh. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't have gotten it, but... Yeah, yeah. The, the same people that are like, oh, it has a 99.9% survivability rate. Now, all of a sudden, those, those yeah. minuscule statistics, they mean a whole lot more, huh? Yeah, it's funny how we just can change statistics to suit our... Almost as though it has nothing to do with reality at all. I know. Yeah, dramatic turn. Da, we, we need da, some, like, sound da. effects. Like that dramatic chipmunk and stuff like that. Dramatic chipmunk? And it goes, dun, dun, dun! It, is, it was like an early internet meme. Oh. Just a, a chipmunk. It was, it was a gopher beaver some sort of rodent and he would like turn at the camera and it would make that dun 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 <laughs> i guess you were not sorry as online as i 
No, I actually didn't get online until I was like 18. Okay, moving on. America. Thanks. Anyway, the campaign is called I'm Get a Shot it, guys, to Make Your Future. To Not to be mistaken for the NRA slogan, Get Shot, ha ha ha, no more future. In science news, a giant tortoise <laughs> believed to be over 100 <laughs> years old was found in That's the Galapagos Islands and has now been confirmed to be of a species that scientists thought was extinct. Now, wow. the last tortoise known to share the DNA sequence of yeah, this tortoise died in tortoise 1906. Apartment. Scientists had actually thought they thought he was extinct. They thought the last one died in 1906. So I'm assuming no, he ain't got no partner. Oh no! Yeah, poor little guy, huh? They're probably gonna bring a poor him big to guy. Zoo. He's probably one of those giant varieties. That's okay. Tortoises. Well, no, there, I mean there was that lonesome George. He, he's, I don't know if he's what dead you, now. George? Lonesome George. He was a tortoise in the Galapagos. Boy, you're just gonna yawn off. Sorry, I'm so. sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So we'll move on to more interesting subjects. No, tell me about George. No, so, so Lonesome George, um, he was another one like this where they thought he was the last of his species. He may even still be alive. He was over 100. He may have been over 150, I think, now that I remember. But yeah, he Look just lived up. his life, his day, just hanging out on the Galapagos with the researchers and stuff. Oh, God, you're going to Google like every single thing, aren't you now? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think? I want answers. Okay. <laughs> they had located the same tortoise back in the 1920s, but it turned out to just be the minority leader of the Republican He's Party. Uh, Mitch McConnell joke. Uh, in people oh, who man. have a... They thought they found him back in the 1920s, but it turned out to be Mitch McConnell. Because he's a turtle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's very turtle. Dang it! I was all excited. What? No, about... <laughs> oh, you thought they actually found another mate for him? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Better luck next time, bro. That one found a mate. Look at it. I know. Who would marry that? Ooh. Sorry. Cooler name than me news. A toddler named Cash Quest, which uh, Cash I assume has Quest. hopes right. to one day join the Wu-Tang Clan, has instead been admitted to Mensa, the oh. world's largest and oldest so high cool. IQ society. The toddler's IQ is an impressive though? 146. That's the thing. Like... IQ tests are, are incredibly flawed to begin with, and like, I don't know. The, intelligence is such like an amorphous thing in general. It's like, you can be really smart and, and know how to do all these complex mathematical equations, but maybe not even be able to change a tire on your car. Are you yeah, really so that you're smart like then? Book smart yeah, there's so many smart. different types of intelligences, and there's so many different ways to apply it, intelligence that it's. You know, it's trying to quantify something that's not really all that quantifiable. That's cool that there's this really smart toddler, I suppose. I don't know how much insight a toddler's going to have. Like, even if she's taken in a lot of knowledge and read a lot of things and can do complex math or whatever it is, like... Cool. She's a toddler. She hasn't been out in the world. Yeah. But whatever. That's cool. Stuff. And she can already she's read... Cute. Identify all the states, name every element on the periodic table, speak Spanish, oh. and more. And I am honestly just so glad that she exists, because now every time someone leaves a pause. comment saying a two-year-old could do... Just a little side note, is they mentioned that she's able, she's able to speak Spanish. She's That's cool. bilingual and stuff. If you want your kid to learn a second language, you should start teaching them when they're like two. Because yeah. they're able to absorb it better and they and haven't the had just that way, yeah. the English language pounded into their head mm -hmm. to make learning anything other than English very difficult. Because sign language should be mandatory for everyone. Okay. It's probably not. You don't, you don't got to whisper. It's not a secret. It's a secret. Oh, it's a secret? Sign language. Sign language would be very helpful. Think about all the situations that you could use sign language for. Think about all the people who rely upon lip reading and for this past year and a half have probably been very upset. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's true. And it, it just helps in general to to have, you know, if you have a visual form of communication at the same mm -hmm. time as an auditory one that's going on, it helps you people. Uh, yeah, it helps people integrate the ideas better because mm -hmm. people will learn in different ways. You can also... Communicate across very long distances with it easily because mm -hmm. you just you're doing hand signals. You don't have to, you know, truck could go by at the wrong time. You could hear 
not hear what someone has to say. So. Right. I agree with that. I like that idea. Yeah. Do my show, I can yell back, damn right, and she would be great at it. When asked for comment, her parents said, even though Mensa isn't the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> their two-year-old daughter, Cash, still ain't nothing to fuck with. I just... <laughs> This one is one of those stories that was a little bit more about me because I just really, I really want to be in the Wu-Tang Clan. Maybe someday, Jimmy. Anyway, let's talk about some adults who probably couldn't compete with a regular two-year-old. Uh, a judge in New Jersey <laughs> has ordered mediation after a woman right, was filmed that, ranting hatefully Wait, at a transgender me. person attempting to use the bathroom. Who couldn't compete oh with my a regular two-year-old? Is anybody surprised that this is the way this woman looks? I'm, I'm kind of surprised she doesn't have a fanny pack to complete the whole set. You know what else I'm kind of confused about with this picture? Sure. Where's her meal? Let me have it. Where's her meal? <laughs> yeah. What is that she's got in her hand? It looks like she might have a little doggy bag in her hand. What would help is if there were a cigarette and the doggy bag. Yeah, a cigarette in one hand, doggy bag in the other. I told you! Ranting at people about how they live their lives. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Tell me more if I can. So here goes New Jersey competing for Florida for the Florida state. Upon realizing she was being recorded, her husband came to her rescue uh, and threw a cup of beer at the people doing the filming. Once again, I just want to reiterate this point. We are talking about people trying to use the bathroom. This is how far the bigots, <coughs> the right, have fallen. They are obsessing over how you poop and will follow you into bathrooms. They've literally become the danger in the bathrooms. At this point, we might... That brings up a good point. Hmm. You know, they're always raving and ranting about, oh, the bathrooms are so dangerous, and if you have men in there, they're going to touch little girls and, and harm them and all this stuff like that. So... So it sounds like bathrooms are the problem because they're dangerous, not because of who's using them so much. You know what's really f extra funny about that, though, for me personally as a what? female? I feel safer in the bathroom sometimes than the okay. place I was sitting at before I went into the bathroom. In fact, if I'm by myself and a situation gets really uncomfortable, I will go hide in the bathroom. Sure. Because I, people aren't likely to follow me in there. In fact, I've never been followed. Well, I don't think I've ever been followed into the bathroom. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a, an incredibly rare thing to begin with. But but even on the off chance that, that someone takes advantage of someone else in a vulnerable state, why would that be okay for people to do that in, you know, one bathroom versus another. Like, if they're a dangerous person, they're going to be dangerous no matter what bathroom right. they go into. You can be in the kitchen, they're going to be dangerous. You can be in the hallway, right. they're going to be dangerous. So maybe the focus should be more, let's make bathrooms safer. Let's do, like, single occupancy. You can put the sink in there, too. and Right? Single occupancy? Such nice Bathroom day. for peoples. Yeah. And then, and then you That's know, it. you could have the line at, 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 like, busy places be where, like, like, like when you have a big row of outhouses, yeah. so it's just like everyone lines up in the same yeah. line, and then as soon as one gets open, right. so why boom, does boom, it... boom, 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 like, you know, mm -hmm. it makes the whole, it makes it fairer and, and faster for everybody. That's funny that you mentioned, like, outhouses and, like, porta potties mm -hmm. because they don't divide them by gender. It's and they're single occupancy. Single occupancy uh -huh. versus, like, handicap, because those ones are a little bit bigger, because right. you need to be able to so, get your So, sure, and, and also have each one of them be accessible to people of all ability levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just do that for so all. So why the is it not a problem when they're porta potties or like that? Mm -hmm. But it's a problem. Yeah, no one's like, "Hey, you're using the wrong porta potty." You're supposed to go in the pink one, <laughs> not the blue one. <laughs> oh God, if they get to the point where they start gendering the porta potties, like what? Well, you know it's coming. You know, I'd like to think it's not, but <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. After this last hashtag, election, if like, you make that, it's my idea, and I get part of the proceeds. That's that's a really long hashtag. I can't. <laughs> Imagine that's going to be trending. It's gonna. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll keep on the eye, keep on the lookout for that. Under his eye. Oh my God. We just started watching The Handmaid's Tale. So, how, how are you liking that so far? By the way. It's in, It's hard to take, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of like, I need to go watch Drag Race for a little bit. Yeah. 
yeah, in between a, stuff sometimes. For, as a cleanser. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's scary to think that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we still in the future take a turn like that as a nation if things don't improve. What am I going to be? Am I going to be a Martha? Yeah, you, or you definitely have to be a commander Martha. wife. Well, I mean, I'm not going to be a commander. <laughs> How are you not going to be a commander? Why would I? You want me to fight for a fascist state? Maybe you're a spy. Oh my god, yes. Maybe maybe I'm a double agent and, and stuff. And then... Yeah. <laughs> We're getting way off the rails. It's very complex. Yeah, there's several, <laughs> several layers there. I can hear her voice without actually listening to it. It's great. Oh, you know what it's going to sound like. Yes, it's not going to be close. McRib at McDonald's. Well, no, she's in, New, I mean, she's in New Jersey, so you have to you have to do a little better New Jersey affectation. Got to talk. Get the coffee. Are you coffee at Starbucks? It's like like yeah, kind of like Linda on, on Bob's Burgers. That's 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 kind of like a Jersey accent. It's not happening. For okay, me. okay. Sorry. Will you practice that in your head? A Russian accent. Be all over okay. Well, <laughs> imagine her as a Russian lady. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's keep going. I need to introduce bills banning Republicans from using bathrooms accessible to good private citizens wanting to dump out. Oh, and wanting by the way, uh, the phrase. guy, the husband, that guy. <laughs> He is a middle school I just, vice I mean, principal. My problem with bathrooms. Oh, and a, did you just catch that? No. That guy's a middle school vice principal. That Superman guy who threw beer at the, the person who, yeah, yeah, way to go. Wow. Almost, yeah. I'm in charge of the youth of America. Yeah. Wait, no, Jersey. Just, just don't even try to exit. Just another take. Okay, we're not gonna do it. I can't. I've... Linda. <laughs> no, it's I, not I, I, I totally bet this guy bullies all the children in his school. I can like see much, it. Especially being vice principal. <laughs> so close to the top. Got to prove himself. And he's looks like a very short man. Which, you know, oh. not trying to body shame, but well, some, sometimes. Sounds like you. Oh, okay, fine. I guess <laughs> I'm canceled. Let's move on. Final important note. After watching the video, we just couldn't help but feel like he looks eerily similar to the Thumb Thumbs from Spy Kids. <laughs> well he done, Ryan. Does. That's awesome. Oh. Did you ever way, see that movie? I did not. No. This is this is past my time. I'm, I think Kids. it was kind of past your time, too. Spy Kids 7. But I think my youngest brother was into them. You should ask I Alex. I should ask if he remembers the Thumb guys. Does look like a thumb. <laughs> as far as the Thumb Thumbs go, bring it back. The older I get, the older I get, the less scary be they become <laughs> and kind of the more hot they become. Oh, Y'all know what I'm talking about? Gross. Speaking of schools with bad leadership, parents and students in where else, Florida, are furious after 80 yearbook photos were found digitally altered oh to hide God. cleavage on female students. What? What the hell, Florida? What does it say? You can see it's it, they they have digitally altered to hide the boobies of, <laughs> of girls. Wow! It's like if if you're gonna be that, you know, severe and and sexist with your your dress codes, why would you wait until after the fact? It's like okay, so the, the bottom right one. No one is gonna take a flap of their shirt and just put it straight across their body. No. That is a horrible. <laughs> that was a horrible Photoshop on top of everything else. But that's that's so ridiculous. Like, I mean, and the funny thing is, is like, and I've said this a hundred times before, but like when other people dress modestly, like uh -huh. Muslim women, for example, uh -huh. with their abayas and the hijab, mm -hmm. that's a problem. That's too covered up. Yeah. But we're going to yeah. raise this girl's shirt up by a half well, that's inch. It. That, that, because it's, it, they got to police it from all sides, you know? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to look a certain way or else you're not a true American. Why aren't they doctoring the boys' photos? Why is it just the girls? Well, I, I guess they don't care about boy boobies. Moobies. Moobs. Yeah. Like, they, they can just show up without a shirt, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. And that's cool. 
Is there any uh, dialogue on the Twitch page? Or? Not yet. All right. Just checking. I'll let you know. Administrators claimed it was a valuable lesson to teach young women the importance of modesty in the school dress code. No, However, that doesn't teach women. Sorry, sorry go ahead. No, really. Oh, you, you, you launched right in. Go ahead. This doesn't teach women the value of modesty. It shames you, shames women for their bodies. Why should I have to feel bad about my body all the damn time? Yeah. As a woman, you get it from every angle. Uh -huh. You get it from other women, solicited and not solicited. You get it from family members. You get it in magazines. You get it in media. Like, stop. Mm -hmm. Just let people be how they are. Right. It's fine. Why don't we teach boys how to control themselves, boys and men? Right. Yeah. Yeah. If we're going to talk about uh, modesty. You, you at, at the very least, have to, to teach the other side of that equation because... Of course, what's implied by women must cover up is that men cannot control themselves. They're yeah. animalistic, and if they, they see too much booba, they'll just, like, lunge like, at it like a wild animal. Does and... that mean that men are weak, then? No. Like, I mean, that, apparently that's, that's what, what they think. Implying. They think right. that they're weak-willed when and it comes to their upset. lustful intentions. Right. That's silly. And, uh, yeah, so you, you at least have to teach the other side of that, then, too, and, and teach mm -hmm. young boys to control themselves. Right. keep them hands to themselves which you know i mean i remember plenty of lessons when i was in ele elementary school about keeping your hands to yourself right hands feet and other objects to yourself right. yeah so has I that has that, that been lost like, like you you teach in elementary schools is that something that they don't even talk about anymore well no we still talk about it all the time it just doesn't stick ah. <laughs> but then again you know a lot has changed since that time mm -hmm. I always like to remind them, like, treat other people how you want to be treated. For sure. That's usually a good measure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and stop obsessing about people's appearances and especially children. Like, really, come on. Yeah, they're kids. They should have small problems. Small people, small problems. Mm -hmm. Big people, big mm -hmm. problems. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that's teaching them from a young age that whatever happens to them is their fault. Mm -hmm. And if they're not modest, bad things can happen. Mm -hmm. That's never actually the case. Right. 100% of, of sexual assaults are, are caused by sexual assaulters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, please. No, no, I'm no. I'm not it, laughing. It, it's in... funny and how obvious it is. Right. And yet how much they, they fuss around, oh, well, no. What about this? What about that? Effect? No, none of that is relevant at all. It's because mm -hmm. of people not being able to control their own urges and by treating women as, as something that they can, you know, do with what they will, as mm -hmm. though they have rights to their bodies. But in this some way. problem isn't even exclusive to the United States either, because of like not. I think about like in Russian history, like if a woman wore jeans, mm -hmm. she was asking for it. Oh. Gross. But wearing jeans. Something that we yeah. hear, like I wear jeans all the time. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure once the once pants came out for as as a woman's fashion, that they had those same sorts of arguments in the states. Which is so funny to me because like that's more work, is well, it not? Yeah, but, like, but I, th I, mean, I think they're like, oh, it's more form fitting, and, and yeah. you know, men will just go crazy. It's right? Like, oh man, I saw hip and thigh, calf. I know that's what you usually say is the sexiest part of my body is my calves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, so you're good constantly. Oh. Hubba hubba. It's like a drumstick. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway, let's move on. None of the male pictures, which also violated the dress code, were altered There's at your all. Answer. None of the male dress codes were altered at all. Even though they, some of them apparently violated dress code. They didn't have these these smears of, of cloth painted over their bodies. Huh. Huh. I guess women just are, are, are or girls are better at, at just controlling their lustful urges, or they just don't have them because they're female, right? It's only the men that, that feel those things. Yeah, I feel nothing at <laughs> all, ever. Just totally dead inside. <laughs> Actually, it was assigned to him as a spouse. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
That's getting back to like Handmaid's Tale stuff. <laughs> oh, it's such a gross sad. world that they depict. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's worth noting that the edits, which were made to literally the tiniest of offenders, I've literally seen more nudity on plumbers. So you literally moved your uh, back uh, it, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. Basically, parents were also very particularly about outraged about that they hadn't consented to these edits. Right. And they were also worried that it might cause self-esteem issues. I mean, look at this ridiculous blending job they think they did. That, that is something that can be done. I used to be a photographer. I used to do edits where people would want clothing modifications. It can be done. This person ain't doing it. <laughs> but keep in mind, as far as the parents saying it might cause self-esteem issues, this isn't me trying to say that what happened was right. Wait, the parents but these might be self-esteem issues? Yeah, of, of them being modified against their will. It's mm -hmm. like, you, you need to be shamed for your body, right. girl. Yeah. Because it's so poorly done. They'll be done, mortifying, especially if it's like... after the fact. Like, you think everything's fine. Right. You, 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 you go and get your picture taken like everyone else. Mm -hmm. you're, you're all proud to, to be in the yearbook and whatever. Right. And you get them back, and someone has shamed you right. after the fact, without your knowledge or, or consent. consent or anything. They have uh, they haven't literally changed your body, but they've, they've put things over your body, which right. is not that far removed. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. I mean, those girls have some great 90s looks going on. Those, I was going to say, this looks like my yearbook I from, like, junior say, high. Yeah, same. I guess those fashions are coming back now. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been 20 it was, years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have. 20 years. Yeah, well, I mean, 20 years since the end of the... No. Yeah. No. It's longer. Yeah. All of the 90s right. were more than 20 years ago now. Yeah, but like now the middle parts are back and the yeah. flared jeans it's and been the like wide 20, leg jeans. 25, 26 All right, years so maybe it's gone a little fashions. longer, but I mean, like, I thought it was cool then. I still think it's cool now. Yeah, you know, I, I like the flannel Except stuff for the still. Middle, middle part. The grunge look. And, and yes, mm -hmm. the butt cut is one thing that can. <laughs> it's just never going to be rectified in my mind. There's no, there's no restoring that. It was a mistake then. I, I suffered from it, and uh, it's a mistake now. I know that is the big thing with the, the Zoomer generation. Wouldn't be su surprised if my kids start asking for it soon. Yep, they're gonna. Oh. So cool. No, it's not. You look like you look at best. You look like a mushroom, and at worst, like a penis. Wow. It's true. Mushroom. Yep. Penises. Well, I mean. Are you gonna watch Sorry. the video? Yes, I am. Okay. I just got distracted. These are parents know, sending their around. kids to school in Florida. I went to public school in Florida myself for nearly four years. Self-esteem is not something you get out of there with. Oh. And in even more annoying news about schools in Florida, last night the Duval County Public School headquarters in Jacksonville was surrounded by oh demonstrators to protest changing the names school? of controversial named schools. I mean, I, I, are you surprised? I'm... I'm... I'm pretty sure Florida was part of the Confederacy. I know. I just, I thought we were done with that. Well, yeah. I mean, we were done with that until the Civil Rights era when they decided to use that particular flag, which was the Virginia battle flag, not the flag of the entire Confederate States of America, but a specific wartime flag to try and intimidate civil rights protesters and, and activists. It's insane. It is insane. And they continue to do it for the same reasons. Can't possibly take really offensive statues down or, or names off of schools of really terrible, horrible people. Or take books out of publication that are oh, hurtful to phew. people. Heaven forbid we take books out of publication. Because every school has to have every book ever written. Otherwise, but they don't. They've sent some... Of course they don't. <laughs> it's impossible. No. They can't possibly have every book. And not every book is going to be, you know, uh, books are going to have their time. They're going to come in and out of fashion. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they're just like throwing them on a pile and lighting them on fire. They're right. just, they go to a different school or I mean, to a library or to, mm -hmm. you know, there's still plenty of, of copies that, that can be available of whatever book it is. I mean, I, in this case, I think they're talking about controversially named schools. So let's see what, what, the, what the names at least yeah. were. The uh, subtitles are not so great here. Oh, they're not? I mean, they're they're doable, but I mean. Do you want to try and do the the? No, I don't want anything in my ears. I know you don't want. <laughs> I swear, next time we we gotta remember to get 
a something splutter. so we can both be on, okay. on headphones. We'll do that. Nine of the schools specifically in that county. And by controversial, yes, you guessed it, I mean Confederate war generals, slave owners, and racists, those were for whom the schools were named. But what about the history? You're going to forget about your history. Yeah. Isn't it sad how, like, in Germany, nobody knows about the Nazis because they tore down all of their insignia and all their statues and everything? That's, right. That's so sad that, spaces. that nobody knows that. It's such important history. It's, it's just a, a shame that they can't get it. Of course, I'm being facetious. Of course they know about the Nazis, even though right. they don't have any statues up. They, they, they literally tore everything down. They, 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 they wiped every insignia. They took every statue, every painting. They took it all out of the public space. Mm -hmm. There, there are, there are memorials the to concentration camps. But again, you're not going to see Nazi stuff there either. They're just going to tell the history and they're going to show the, the horrors that, that were um, committed. Mm-hmm. And interesting. Because that's not how people. Lose. And I've never gone up to a hit, to a statue and said, "Oh God!" Now that I've read this little plaque about it and I've seen this statue, I know something about history. Mm -hmm. That's not where you learn history. It's such a weak T argument. Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny too in Germany is if you make any sort of public comments that are pro Nazi or things like that, you will get in trouble. Mm -hmm. immediately yeah without I, without yeah. question like yeah they, they, and they have laws against hate speech and, and stuff like that too right there still unfortunately is a rise of, of um a fascist movement again in germany but mm -hmm. it's it, you know it, it's it's underground though too so it's i think there's something to be said for forcing things to to remain underground mm -hmm. and out of the public consciousness at the very least you know, right. I think we, we did a lot better as a, a nation in the U.S. when uh, we actively opposed groups like the KKK and, and made it incredibly difficult to join or at least be publicly affiliated with it. Mm -hmm. You know, people always talk about how, oh, at least it's out in the public and stuff like that. And, mm, being out in the public does more than, than, than just make you able to identify it. Mm -hmm. It also normalizes things. Right. You know, it says... If, if, if you see someone going down the street who has all these hateful messages on and, and, and there's a bunch of other people with them with those same sorts of messages and no one is opposing them and they're just being allowed to go about their business, it seems like it's a normal, acceptable thing. Mm -hmm. And little by little, you, you attract in people and you build your movement mm -hmm. of hate around it. So, But yeah can't have our, our beloved Confederate general names wiped from our schools. It's so ridiculous. And how did these demonstrators choose to protest these name changes? By putting Confederate flags all over the lawn. And in a other apparently breaking news that we, I assume right now we Wait, need to cover based on this. The, the, the pro they were protesting taking the names down from the uh, schools. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gross. Yup, really, uh, really trying to win the public opinion, right? I would light all of them on fire. <laughs> Man, that, that was so. <sighs> that, that was a little bit jarring when we went down to, to Florida, and every single tourist shop had at least like one bikini, bikini that was like, yeah, it was it was almost always the bikini for some reason. Mm -hmm. Like of all the places you're gonna put up your flag, it's gonna be on a bikini but I mean whatever but still I mean, almost every place sells confederate flags or, or at least shirts that had the, the flag on and all the okay. sorts of things it's, it was yeah but then there's two flags oh my god well if it's, if it's a three piece then or a two piece then it's gonna be three flags yeah see yeah. yeah that's how they got it maybe one on the butt too yeah of course four flags four <laughs> sorry so, so it's, just, it's just a number of flags per, per item. That's why they, they choose the bikini. That's your theory? Yeah. Okay. okay. Because if it's not a one piece, like, who would buy that? Well, who's going to buy a Confederate thing anyway? Unless you're just a complete dick. They're there, aren't they? Yeah. They, I mean, they clearly have to sell at some point or another. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep them in shop, right? I suppose that's true. Supply and demand. I suppose that's true. That's how this great capitalistic society works. Yeah. The South lost the war 166 years ago. And you can't even play the you're erasing history card 
because we're talking about what a school is named. That is something you extend to someone as an honor. You don't right. preserve history by worshiping monsters. At this point, you're going to start hearing people on the I right defending keeping up history textbooks. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they've definitely altered the textbooks and tried to sanitize the worst parts of American history. You know, like, talking about the, the Indian Removal Act as though they were just like happy natives yeah. just moving off to a new yeah, land like, oh, okay, that the, the gracious white back. man set up for them out in Oklahoma instead of the, the horrible trail of tears that it was. Mm -hmm. um, trying to make the, I mean, there's still plenty of Southern organizations mm -hmm. that, that try to sanitize the history of the Confederacy as though... You know, there's, there's a great series um, called Uncivil. It's a podcast series. And they, they go through piece by piece all this propaganda and how it was built up to sanitize the, the Confederate history. Mm -hmm. and, and they would say things like, you know, um, most slaves are treated well, a, a cruel master being the exception. And um, the, the, the war was about economy and stuff like that. And, they, you know, if you were to think for more than half a second... What, what economy? What part of the economy? Oh, it's the slave part of the economy? Oh, okay. Well, that makes a little more sense. I think that's such a horse crap Of course excuse. it is. Of course it is. They, like, they just want to keep the... It's about keeping the current order. Oh, like there's good... There were good guys. No, those people weren't getting paid. No. They were being exploited. They couldn't vote. They couldn't hold land. No. They couldn't... They couldn't read. They were... They, were yeah. for, they could be whipped right. or killed for reading. Yeah, or knowing that. how to read. Reading, like I'm reading the screen right now. I could be, well, I could be Kelvin Gilead too for that. Oh, I mean, that's true. Yeah. <gasps> what if that's why the American education system Speak fails the kids? Sorry, I was just. That's saying, okay. What if that's why the American education system fails kids? They don't want them to actually learn how to read. Well, I mean, there's there's a <laughs> big nugget. Of, no, no, no. But but there really is a big nugget of truth to, to that. The American education system is not designed to make everybody be, you know, managers and and or own their own businesses or have well-paying jobs because there's just there's only so many of those. That's the way it's right. structured. So, so it has to support its system. So that's why things like obedience, being quiet, not talking back, respecting authority, these these sorts of things go along with the education system. It's so you can be a good worker later on. Sorry, that shouldn't be shocking, but just in a few moments of processing my own childhood education, mm -hmm. I never wanted to get in trouble. I always wanted to do well. Right. Yeah, it's, it's conditioning from a very young age. Oh my God. I know. And I mean, how much of education is about teaching children how to think for themselves or to, to explore ideas that are difficult or, or, or hard to face? seldomly happen and questions at least... In the setting that I have been in lately are not necessarily encouraged. I mean, you've known teachers that have actively discouraged any sort of questions happening mm -hmm. in class. Like, yeah. Which is really sad. It is sad. Because I think discussion and questions show you that they're engaged in whatever you're discussing mm -hmm. or you're talking about as a class. So you're comprehending. And it shows that they're engaged, at least right. on some level, even if it's not very well. They know enough to ask something about it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I sub and stuff, I usually pause a lot to say, are there any questions? Is there anything you didn't understand? Right. And, and I think you can relate to this point too. Um, just thinking about independent thinking and, and working out problems from yourself. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that from a school. I learned that from my father, first and foremost. He would never give me an easy answer. Mm -hmm. He would always make me work things out. And, you know, he would help me process things so I could arrive at a, an answer. And now I'm at a point where I'm intellectually curious. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the same was, was true with, with your grandpa, right? Yeah. Papa yeah. always was like, ask questions, ask questions. Mm -hmm. You should ask questions all the time. And it's funny because once in the education system, I hit a certain point where it was like my questions were no longer welcome. Right. It's like, stop. Yeah. Or we need to move on. We don't have time for this right mm -hmm. now. I was like, oh, but I mean, there have been things, times when I was teaching where I would write things down and right. be like, I'm going to go look that up for you. And then later on, I would go find right. them and be like, hey, I found out that, you know, during this battle, 150 people were killed. And for that time right. in history, that was a lot. Right. That would be like a million people dying now. Or right. Some, you know, it yeah. was 
I mean, these are important things, and these are the mm-hmm. things that keep you lifelong learners who who don't just accept things as they are, right? Who question why and how and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff, right? Um, which I find to be a valuable mm-hmm. characteristic of anybody. I like. Um, and this is not to, to criticize any individual teachers right. themselves. They're they're in service to a system that's that's imposing these standards on them as well. Um, it's, 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 it, uh, it always comes back to the system right. with these sorts of problems. It's why is this is institution the way it is? Um, usually it's for some sort of social control and to, to keep mm-hmm. things relatively stable. Um, mm-hmm. and you'll often hear conservatives talking about how they want stability more than anything. Mm-hmm. Stability means they stay on top and, uh, mm-hmm. or at least relatively better than some less privileged neighbor. Right. That's funny because like things like classroom control and all those kind of things, it's like mm-hmm. walk in, state your expectations, state your agenda. Mm-hmm. I expect you to raise your hand when you have a question or you need to talk. For sure. I expect that you stay in your seat. Right. So, and then if we get all of these things done or, you know, if we complete our assignment and mm-hmm. if people are willing, we can play the game for the last 10 mm-hmm. minutes of class. Mm-hmm. And it works for me almost every single time time mm-hmm. yeah for sure so sorry no no i don't think sorry for that's fine it's a good point um yeah it, you know question question the educational system too and and why it is that it's oriented as it is and and what the end result is is mm-hmm. explicitly and implicitly supposed to be for students is it just to be a good little worker, or is it to be a well-rounded human who is capable of, of, of thinking about things critically critically, and, and being able to change their lives and, and reach whatever potential they have inside them? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately at this point, it's going to be on a lot of, uh, on, on parents a lot to help with that sort of thing because schools just aren't. And... You know, also schools are, are, are squeezed from the other side because they, they have to spend so much time and effort uh, teaching to tests for the standardized testing. Okay. So they, like, they, they, like it literally can be that they don't, they just don't have time to, to dive more deeply into questions that students might have or, or help nurture their curiosity in one subject or another. They just got to, they got to keep going because they have enough, because the system right now is basically the knowledge banking system. Mm-hmm. You shove a bunch of facts into a kid's head and then they just spew them back out on a test so that you get your funding because you've proven that you are The thing you know, is, though, teaching. is that never works. Kids are taught how to take tests, not right. the content on the test, which right. is really unfortunate because even then I still feel like they're not taught that well. And these standardized tests that are out there are awful because they hold everyone to the same measure Mm -hmm. and not all of them perform at the same measure no there will be kids that are more advanced and there will be kids who are challenged in some areas and let me okay well just just to add into that there's there's kids that english is not their first language but they're Mm -hmm. still required to take the test in english like they would flunk the test in english but they they would, they would ace it in, in, in Spanish, Spanish or, or, or Somali or, or right whatever, or Hmong or whatever whatever the native language or the yeah. first language uh, happens to be right, and it's it's disgusting. Or I think about like special ed students who have certain modifications that for their normal IEP, they take a test in class and they are given an extra fifteen minutes, mm-hmm. and they read the questions mm-hmm. because that helps them process it. But then when it comes down to the standardized test, those modifications are not allowed. Right. So right. then that kid's going to get mad. standard. I've seen keyboards thrown, mice thrown, like them I'm not surprised. That would be incredibly frustrating. Yeah, because they're like, well, this is a test and I always get to take my test this way. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Right. Like the MCA, I think they're only given like 40 minutes. Jeez. For each respective portion Jeez. like that's not enough time for some of these guys and some of them like to go back and double check and some of them you know it's and that test it scares me because like they'll get a question mm-hmm. and they'll answer it and then they'll get another question and they answer it and if they continue to get the questions right 
they'll progressively make the test harder and harder and harder. Oh. And then if they bomb that question, then they just drop them down to the bottom of the pool again. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Like, I can see the dynamic question giving no. as, like, trying to fine-tune, right, like, where exactly they are, mm-hmm. but to, to just penalize them and push them back to the, the start. Oh, not the start oh. of the test. No, no, the, I mean, the, the, the start of the type the, of question will how be... How hard the question is. Yeah, the hmm. questions vary depending on how well they're doing because they're tracked as they move along. And that's another thing. These tests don't show students progress. Like, sure, the first year that they take it, they may not pass. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the next year they don't pass, but they did better than the first time that they took it. Mm -hmm. But that's not taken into consideration. They Mm -hmm. don't care. Sorry, that just makes me really upset. No, so many levels. This is this is good stuff. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I know you've had quite quite a few frustrations with the educational system, having worked in it now for a few years. But I do like it. I like working yeah. with the kids and all of that. Please, it's not. No, 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 it's no. It's not no. like. I I hate how things are run sometimes. Of course, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> That's totally fine. So mean. Why can't I get? I was just trying to get something up on the control panel. Um, the skip frame is really low today. Good job. Yeah. Since, you know, one of the big things that has helped with that is is setting it to 30 frames per second rather than 60. It was just, hmm. the computer was working too hard to try and process that kind of fidelity. And I think 30 is good enough. You know, I, I've looked back at our videos and, and I don't think we're really lagging too much. So Cool. Yeah, that, that's helped out a lot. But anyway, back to the the subject at hand. Statues of Hitler in the name of history. Just kidding. Not at this point because it already happened. Google Marjorie Taylor Greene Hitler statue and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh my God. Did did I, did I tell you about this incident? Did I? I don't know. Marjorie, okay. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mm -hmm. you know, her QAnon believer. Likes to, to hound AOC. But she's not QAnon. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> a crazy one. A, or a, a, a... Yeah. Has some questionable beliefs. Has some questionable beliefs. So th- this video has resurfaced of her where uh, she was at some sort of a hearing and uh, they, they were considering taking down a statue and... Someone had asked her the question, I believe, you know, or she, or she just, maybe we'll have to try and find this video at some point, but like, it came up that she basically said, uh, even if there was a statue of Hitler up, I wouldn't want that turned down because it's history. Yeah, she'd be totally fine just, you know, walking to the grocery store and then passing, oh, you know, old Hitler, just uh, sig hailing everyone out on the street. And I, you know what? I think she would be okay with that. I would take her at her word. She would not find a single problem with that. Now, if there was a there was a statue of AOC, you know she would be the first one on the on the picket line. Yeah. yeah, I mean she would she would She'd do everything in her power to to TBA. knock that down. You know, but yeah, as long as it's on her side, it's okay. And that that tells you exactly what her well, side is. Yeah, she's a creepy lady. Very obsessed with certain politicians. I need to go back to my video. Hmm. Okay. I'm teasing. Gotcha. Oh, moving on. <laughs> Construction. I need a sip. Construction of a 3.5 million square foot Amazon facility in Connecticut has been shut down after finding a noose on the construction site. Police believe this was an intimidation tactic initiated by a hate group what? fueled by racism and discrimination. Oh, and let me tell you, you police me? know a thing or two That's about horrible. racial intimidation. Oh, yeah. and you know what else isn't great? This is the eighth noose That's they have found on the site since construction forward. began. The eighth noose they have found on this construction site. This is what This is, is why I have a problem with it. 
<laughs> and I thought it was going to be okay. It says eighth news. Oh, yeah. It says news. <laughs> News said, no, it's eighth news they found on this particular construction site. Since construction began. It's a country to live in. 2021. And that's in Connecticut. Yeah, like, I mean, Connecticut is, is very uh, kind of upper class, white. I mean, <laughs> Gilmore Girls is not exactly a stretch in their depictions of a lot of the people. I'm just, Zach, I just. It hurts, okay. I know. It just hurts. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm cry it's fun inside, stuff. Guys. And you know, it'll all have been left by those same assholes who like to say things like, black people just need to get over slavery, and yet still spend 30% of their income on rope and Confederate flags just in case the South rides again. <sighs> Honestly, I feel like That's today disgusting. we're just trying to see how much I can take before I actually lose my shit. And by the way, Amazon has millions of those little cameras. I know, because I can't go anywhere on the internet without having them advertised to me. Why can't you catch eight nooses and you're not going to put up a, a, a an Echo camera, whatever they're called? Uh, let's just... Yeah, really. Like, you'd think after the first time they might beef up their security... Just a little bit. Because they don't, they're they the problem. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing that they, they know who has done this and they just don't don't care enough mm -hmm. to stop it. It's gross. Or they don't care enough to, to try and catch whoever's doing this. It very well may be someone that, that works for the company, the construction company itself. You never know. Mm -hmm. Still, it's disgusting. It is disgusting. Let's do the next story. Okay, uh, good, good. We're on Florida again. A police officer in Florida has been fired from his job for misconduct for the seventh time. The seventh time. According to reports, the officer... Time? Seven times for misconduct. Seven times. He just times. keeps getting his job back. He's like, oh, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to do that thing. <laughs> There are no consequences for police in this country. You know what the problem is? It, 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 it took oh, weeks of testimony and the, the, the largest protest movement in American history to get one police officer tried for a murder and, and convicted for a murder that everyone caught on camera and there was... There was no way there out. There was no possibility. There's, there's, no, there's no, no way out. There's no way that that couldn't have been right. taken Right. But that's what it took it. just to get the minimal amount of, of, of quote-unquote justice because it's not as though Floyd has his life back. You know, right. there's no taking back the damage that he's done to the to Floyd's family and, and Floyd himself. And the funny thing is, it's like all this over a potentially fake $20 Of course. Round? Right. And that, that that's part of this, this whole... Like corrupt model Again, of policing you that... have markers you have markers right. that well, you can no we have options right but that's not really and the, like, the, the okay. problem is not exactly in catching the guy passing right what they I never just, even determined whether it was a, a fake right. 20 in the first place yeah but like the problem is that but that it's, cashier that's what trying to was pass it off as is like right but but the, the real problem was that cashier was was required by his boss to Chase him down. To, to call the police anytime he suspects uh, fraud of any kind. Otherwise, it would it would come out of his paycheck. Which, how can he do that to a 19-year-old kid? That was like his oh, first job. Because you're you're a small business owner and, and... A monster? And also a monster. That's not... I mean, you know, we, we tend to venerate small business owners in this country, but they too are capitalists and a great many of them are not above just exploiting the hell out of their workers. You know, above and beyond just, you know, taking most of their paycheck for themselves. But, yeah, just because you are a small business owner doesn't make you mean you're a good person or that you treat your employees well. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, I forgot where I was going with that. But, yeah, but it, police officers in this country do not face any sort of consequences. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's insane what it takes to actually make them... Face the minimal amount of even well, accountability or consequence for their action. That's the funny thing, though. Like, I mean, 
I'm working through my own complex feelings about consequences and things like that. But like, we live in a society right now where a lot of people don't experience consequences for mm -hmm. wrong or, you know, poor judgment. Mm -hmm. Like, you can just buy your way out of it. Yeah, it all depends on the or status you start with. In a, yeah, exactly. If you're in a position of high power, mm -hmm. it'll be a very small problem. Like, hey, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you're in the lower classes or a minority mm -hmm. and you do anything wrong, even if you don't do anything wrong, you just look like you might yeah. do something wrong. Right. Or, you know... They mix you up with someone else. Right. That's just... Well, I mean, that's why police, or that's why lawmakers and police, every, everything um, treats property crime a lot more seriously than, than even things like rape, um, even murder in some cases. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of murders go unsolved, ever. Mm -hmm. Um and, and, and again, even the property crime, it depends on who's being stolen from. If it's, if it's, you know, someone like us, we just live in a regular uh -huh. old apartment. Like a catalytic converter. Catalytic converter. Yeah. I mean, the, the, we, we reported it to the police, but they're just like, okay, thanks for letting us know. We'll put it down in our statistics. That yeah. There's, there's no investigation. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. So, but if you are protesting near... Uh, a rich neighborhood. They they're real quick to station as many police as they can. Oh, we to, have to protect them. We have to protect the rich people's property because that's what a lot of that's these who laws pays our bills. are about. Even though it comes out of everyone's income. Sorry. And it does. Yeah. It just right, but I mean, police and are there funny. to reinforce the yeah. status quo, I just including the entire right current structure. You know, I just thought of something else too. The middle class should be more upset because the wealthy pay less in taxes than they do. Mm -hmm. We have to cover the brunt of their shortcomings on paying taxes. So right. shouldn't we be even more upset? Because I mean, but but they in, get instead more protection. It, right. Instead, they're more fearful of slipping down into the lower classes. So so they too end up trending towards preserving the status quo and, and the current system, you know, lest they, they fall into the undesirables category. Mm -hmm. I just oh, sorry. I'm so... <laughs> I think we should start doing these streams earlier. I asked for that. I know, but we weren't ready earlier though, were we? We were we were making puppy chow instead. We were also doing laundry. Yeah, but we were also doing laundry. So anyway, if, we, if we're gonna do it earlier, we gotta re reorganize. And now that I have Sundays off yeah. There is a possibility to do. Maybe we could, we could do, do in the afternoon. We could do an afternoon stream like instead. Like a three, so. three o'clock. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening as, as we a could podcast have or whatever. We could do it at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, uh, you know, actual Jake, the, 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 the YouTuber, he has a, a special stream That's every Sunday, Sunday called The Sunday Service where he talks about religious stuff <laughs> with his, his friend, uh, Arian, who's a former NFL player. Uh, it's pretty good. I've, I've caught parts of it before. Cool. I've never he, caught any of it. He knows a hell of a lot about the Bible. He does an atheist Bible study as well. So, yeah, it, it's a good thing. It's a good um, stream that he does. But we should get going because, yeah. you know, we're into the 8 o'clock hour already. And, and we're, we're not even halfway all, done. And we, have, and we still here. have Caitlin Bennett to get to. <laughs> if in this, if in, we make it. In this video, we have Caitlin Bennett to get to. So... <laughs> Let's keep going. Sir, or more accurately, the asshole has used extreme force, hid drugs in his police car, beat up juveniles, and even punched a guy in the face while he was they're, holding his... They're listing his... the things he's done. He's, he's, he's beat up juveniles. He's hid, gar hid drugs on people's bodies. You know, he's, he's done this, this laundry list of really heinous stuff that should would make a regular citizen be sent to prison immediately. But because he's a cop, he just keeps getting... Right. He's special. Seventh chances. <laughs> chance <laughs> i don't know that so, is this is this no I is just this made amanda it up. original wow yeah exclusive content here right no no possibility of dmca for that control yourselves please <laughs> 14 month old baby 
and he still got his job back. Really? Last time you thought, oh, well, after six times, for sure it's going to get better. Like, yeah, nothing changed from times one through five, but six, that's, of course he's going to learn his lesson. I've got to say this again. This isn't Sears. How you do your job matters. And by the way, even if it was Sears, when they fire someone, they stay fired. Sure, maybe occasionally someone, like, gets a second chance, but in the entire time I worked at Sears years ago, I only saw that happen once, and it was actually for an employee who ended up on the TV show, I didn't know I was pregnant. Is that story made up? What? I didn't. Maybe. <sighs> yes. Now you're gonna go watch the show, aren't you? No, please just. No, I'm not saying right at this moment, I'm just saying. No, I need you to clarify that I read what I yes. think I read. Oh, oh, yeah, because yeah, of, of the captions, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, something about how the, someone that, that got fired... Oh, God, now I have to go back. There's a whole thing about <laughs> someone he knew when he worked at Sears, and they, mm -hmm. they either got fired, and then he saw them later on the show, I didn't know I was pregnant. Oh, I've seen that before. Oh, so you're already quite familiar with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you want to move on? Do you want to make... Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Let's... Pregnancy is often a surprise. <laughs> Apparently, it's enough to make a show out of it. You have no idea. Huh? Might be. Okay. Somebody and do you want to know the best part? Ex-Sergeant Herman Boske here absolutely has said that he believes he's going to be getting his position back again. And it's Florida. So, yeah, probably. I have no doubt. For sure that's going to happen. Obviously. All right, stick around. After the break, I'm going to be showing you some TikToks from Caitlin Bennett's sister and reacting to them totally unscripted and unprepared. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the awesome people on Patreon. Wow. This. Wow. <laughs> Dave, you all right? Should we talk no, about it? content because his hair's long. He just cut his Yeah, let's go ahead really and let's... All right, let's move past that. Go to his Take Patreon, Jimmy Snow's awesome. Welcome back, everyone. So I was originally going to use this nice segment guy, to suggest funny. that a bunch He's of you funny. go tag me on the TikTok profile of very Abby sure. Nicole. That is Caitlin Bennett's sister, so that I could discuss with her maybe her coming on the show. Abby However, Nicole. there is no need for that now. What's that? Abby Nicole. Abby. Caitlin Bennett. Yeah, it seems like Abby's a really popular name. Uh, what's that? Paul and Morgan, and then those two special blonde ladies. What are you doing? I got like a loose hair, and it's oh. really bothering me. Who are those? I don't want to say mean things. Who are those blonde, very religious young ladies who are married and they always talk about godly things? And I don't know. All right, just never mind. It's fine. Okay, moving on. <sighs> Because we've actually made we'll, contact, we'll and I'm happy to announce that we're already having such discussions. But I thought we would still do the original piece, uh, the thing that we were going to do for the show, because a lot of you have been tagging me on this TikTok channel. Uh, and so I had David clip out some of the best parts. And even better, I'm going to be reacting to the clips totally unscripted, totally unprepared, as I have not yet seen most of these videos. Now... If y'all don't know who Caitlyn Bennett is, she's basically an alt-right princess who likes to shit on the poor, uh, shit on racial minorities, queer people, and basically everyone who doesn't fit her dream of a white Christmas. And by Christmas, I mean utopia. Anyway, she is known for wearing a gun to school and going and interviewing oh, yeah, random right. common folk about complex issues, oh, yeah, but cutting she out anytime she... Pants. Yeah, yeah, she's poop girl. Pooped herself at a party. Sounded like it was pretty nasty. Accidentally talks to someone who knows like what they're talking leave. about. So we're going to cut off the teleprompters and, and start showing herself. you some of the clips from her sister. Oh, well, uh, this will be fun. We're doing it together. Oh, Dave, fine. go ahead and give me the first clip. Which is crazy so gross, because though. the only reason that Caitlin has made it to the age <laughs> that she is now <laughs> is because um, her mom was on assistance when we were younger. I mean, she was on food stamps, she was on cash assistance, and I'm all for people getting assistance. And I mean, Sorry, I, what, are, what are you saying? Get another job to Ooh. pay for your. Uh, no. People shouldn't have to work more than 40 hours to pay That's their right. baseline needs. If you want more, 
than that or you want a more extravagant life for yourself, then fine. Sure. But it is hard enough for people. You don't even have to work 40 hours. Like, all the... All the work in the world can be accomplished now. In like four hours. Yeah, if you can that. I mean, I uh, I just downloaded uh, David Graeber's book, Bullshit Jobs. Mm-hmm. And it goes through this, like he, he put out as like just kind of a funny thing about how such and such percentage of, of the workforce is just bullshit jobs. It's stuff that literally has no productive value. It's like people that are, they have a contract and, and um, for whatever reason they can't, fulfill part of it but they're still hired on and like or, mm-hmm. or, or middle managers who have a bunch of people uh sitting on um beneath them just for their status but these people don't really do much of anything they just like you know get them coffee or tell them they're great and stuff like that on and on like he came up with i think it's something like 40 percent of the economy or 40 percent of the workforce is just bullshit jobs that you could get rid of all of them tomorrow it would make not a bit of difference in in the productive uh, capacity of the U.S. You know what's funny about that too, though? Like education. So having done Zoom school and (gasps) online school, excuse me, most of these kids are finished with all of their schoolwork in like two and a half hours. That's it. Yep. Yep. So like, what does that tell us about? Well... I mean, that tells us that originally school was was kind of a daycare. It was to get kids off the street in places like New York City where they would run the streets in large gangs and and people didn't like that. So it was it was kind of a a daycare, but then they added the, you know, the noble pursuit of educating the masses and stuff like that. Except people still treat school like it's daycare now. They they still do. Which they shouldn't like, have I don't, to. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. As long as my kids got somewhere to go. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. care if they're failing math. Yeah. yeah. Science. That's sad. English. <laughs> like, okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Sorry. No, no sorry. problem. I'm, I'm on assistance. Like, that's the only reason that she is where she is today. I feel like she should be a little more appreciative about people on assistance. <laughs> okay, so basically, Caitlin shits all over people that are on assistance and yet growing up her mom was on assistance and that's the only way that they survived and the only way that she made it to adulthood so she can now turn around and shit on it and shit on everyone else who needs the same help that she has that her family had themselves that's i mean i don't expect anything more from her i've never heard a good faith argument from her that's really like disturbing yeah, the, I mean, that's kind of part of the conservative ethos. I mean, is, as long as I got mine, Jack, like I'm just going to turn around and slam the door in everyone else's face. Like, I think if someone needs help, we should help them, right? Right. Because in my heart, I would hope that that help would be there when I needed it. Right. And I'll tell you guys, it's not oh, a glamorous thing. Follower. Antifa General, thank you so much for the follow. Um, I, I am uh, Zach. And this is my wife, Amanda. We do uh, these Sunday streams together where we just kind of watch whatever video we feel like watching and comment on it. And then um, I need orders. What's the next target? Uh, Mm -hmm. I I, I will meet with you privately after the show. We can discuss such tactics. But for now, um, so yeah. So Sunday nights, we we do this sort of thing where we just kind of talk about YouTubers and, and videos and stuff like that. And then Thursday, I'm sorry, Friday nights at 7 p.m., I do a theory stream where I, I listen to an audiobook, do about a chapter a week of an audiobook. This this uh, upcoming week, we're going to be doing part two of chapter 12 of The Conquest of Bread, and then I have a guest on usually, and we, we discuss it and uh, try to relate it to the modern day and stuff like that. Target acquired, Grandma's Antique Shop. All right, boys, saddle up and grab your pockets, and hair dye, going to be a long night. Well, you know, good luck Blue to you, hair comrade. Day, right? Because that's what we do. Well, I mean, we that's couldn't, what the right says we couldn't we do. be SJWs without blue hair. I feel like I've kind of been slipping now. Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah we can get fix my, that tomorrow. My dye regimen and <laughs> properly offend people who are always on about how everyone's offended. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks really. for the follow. I hope you I hope you like it. You see, and and you you stick around for uh, the rest of the show. Wait, we were talking about something, and then so Caitlin Bennett apparently grew up. 
Her mom was on assistance. That's oh, the yeah, only sorry, reason she got go. into adulthood. And now I, she shits on people who back are now. on assistance. Go ahead. So, like, the assistance programs are not very glamorous. It's very difficult. In fact, last summer, I had to go on unemployment for the summer. Mm-hmm. That is the first time I'm 30. I was 35 mm-hmm. at the time. First time ever on unemployment. I've been working since I was 15. It was just, it was a bad year. It was a COVID year. And it was awful. I had to go through tons and tons of paperwork. They make it so hard. Like 20 different documents. And Mm -hmm. yes, I understand there are certain things that I have to satiate. And then I didn't even get approved. Oh, it took forever to get approved. I didn't see any money until September, which I had already been working again for two weeks. So, like, it definitely was helpful to get that chunk of money so we could then catch back up. But, But yeah, like, where were you when we actually needed you? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, it made me feel really terrible about myself. Like, And then I was like, wait a minute, I shouldn't feel bad about this. I've been paying into this forever. Mm -hmm. And I've been working... For 20 years, like, surely this tiny bit of help, this teeny tiny bit of help, it would have been like two months of help. It's right. nothing. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I, 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 that's the thing. I'm trying to look up the specific episode right now, but this reminds me of, uh, there was a recent episode of the podcast, This Is Hell. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal podcast uh, out of Chicago. Um let me give you the, the exact title, but he was talking with his guest about how social programs are, are, are policed for waste and fraud at an incredibly disproportionate rate to uh, uh, for, for poor people than they are for uh, the rich and things like tax fraud and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They go really hard after people who want to be on um, food assistance or, or get WIC or any of these, all these regulations, all these consequences for people that... that uh, even uh, um, might step out of line. Like uh, there's requirements for things like WIC and and um, uh, supplementing the, the SNAP program, the supplemental nutrition uh, program, where if you are living with people that are not on that same assistance, you have to separate all of your food in the refrigerator from all of their food so that there's no possibility that someone that wasn't on that program could get any that of that food. food. And, and they can show up unannounced come into your house with a police officer and look in your fridge. And if it's not separated out, you can get kicked off the program. You can get big fines. Um, I suppose you could even go to jail if it's, if, it, if they decide it's really egregious. You think that people, you would definitely need to live with other people to even have shelter at that point. If you were really in that kind of a bind, especially if you didn't have children. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's really what moves you up. In these situations is like having children and I have no children mm-hmm. so like I kind of wonder sometimes and, and not saying that they shouldn't but mm-hmm. like if that would have processed for me faster had I had kids absolutely and they, they talked about in this episode it's just two episodes ago in the series so it's it's episode 1343 public assistance state surveillance um, and it's with Spencer Hedworth phenomenal episode they talk about that where there's there's I think it was since Nixon's time, I think when they, they, they would talk about like the, the welfare queens, and all these, mm-hmm. these myths of these, these, these people who would really abuse these, these social welfare programs back when we actually had things like welfare, like a, like a UBI for, for poor people, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, they hardly ever do cash assistance anymore. You have to yeah. be, you can apply you for really emergency assistance, like... but the, I think you can get like three or four years in your entire life where you're on that and then you just cut off. But, but anyway, um, they were talking about how when they were setting up these social programs, they came up with this idea of a class of people that would be the worthy poor. You know, those that through disability or through being a child or through being old and, and, and just unable to work anymore had legitimate reasons for being poor and that everyone else was, was automatically a garbage person. suspect. You know, like, oh, you, I see that you, you went for a walk, but you said that you can't, uh, you know, work because you're disabled or stuff like that. And they, they, they try to nail these people because of that sort of thing. Which is pathetic because they're probably like a walk around the block or something to stretch their well, legs. I mean, or, yeah. Yeah. But they, they put all these resources into it. And 
<laughs> we're talking about the, the the results of it, where like your average fraud case for for any sort of public assistance, they would end up getting back an average of like less than three hundred dollars. Meanwhile, so people's entire worth. salaries are being paid to right. to investigate this sort of thing, mm -hmm. and at the same time, they they would talk about these other programs that like. Um, you know, they might have some sort of a, a subsidy for a, a, a small business or something. And they would, they would catch people because they, they do have enforcement for these other programs as well. It's just not as much. But they would catch people doing it and they would get back like tens of thousands or millions of dollars from these programs when they, they would catch fraud for the business owners. You know, these, these supposed mm -hmm. worthy people of, of getting assistance from the government. Super interesting episode. I'm going to try and remember to leave a link to it in the in the description when I upload this to YouTube, which I do. Um, Bread Theory on YouTube. So go check that out. You can see all the backlog of, of all the episodes I've done. Um, I also have a podcast on Anchor, also called Bread underscore Theory. So you can check me out there too. See almost everything I've done. I don't throw absolutely everything up. I, I keep a lot of the streams um, from the Sunday shows. I, I just don't put every single one of them up there but but all the theory stuff is up there as well as a few bonus episodes from sundays so yeah check that out and i'll try to leave a link to it but yeah let's keep on going mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i have to say i agree uh so what she was talking about somebody had left a comment talking about how um caitlin bennett being the alt-right princess she is craps often on people who need assistance who need government help uh, to get back off their feet. And there's this whole, like, you just need to pick yourself up by your bootstraps thing. Uh, uh, that One side note. Do you know where the origin of that, that pick yourself up by your boots, came from? bootstraps oh. comes up? Oh, it looks like we have another follower. Let's see who we got this time. Uh, Mumbo's trusted advisor. Well, thank you for the follow. I assume that was you. It's not showing up here yet, but... Um, Hello, uh, welcome to the, the stream. We're just kind of talking about some random political videos. Right now we're looking at some of the, uh, we're looking at Jimmy Snow, who's a, a YouTuber, and he's, he's himself looking at some uh, TikToks that Caitlin Bennett's sister has posted. So we're kind of com commenting on that. I didn't know politics existed as a genre on Twitch. Yeah, and there's not many of us that are willing to go on the, the politics category because um, pretty much once a stream, I'll get a troll. It's no big deal. Um, it's usually just bored people who come up with, uh, pretty weak insults and inflammatory stuff. Um, so that's why most people keep it as just chatting, but I like to do the politics thing. I like to be open about what I do and you know, it, it has worked so far cause, cause I'll end up getting a few more followers each week than I do trolls. And I think one of the reasons is because politics, there's just not that many of us that stream in that category. So I hope you're, and you're so smart. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, they usually ban free speech, uh, those people. I don't tend to ban free speech. Uh, if you're going to be inflammatory, if, if you're someone who's going to try and derail discussion or, or have bad faith arguments, I might get annoyed and, and ban you. But, you know, I, I never try to ban people if they just have a different opinion. You know, I myself am a leftist. Really good conversations with people, oh, actually. Okay. Not you. You just oh, Twitch bans those sorts yeah. of people. <laughs> okay. I see. That's that makes what I more sense. They meant. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I do like to, to be more open even than than some other political streamers to differences of opinions because I think everyone can learn and everyone can grow and I, and I hope that I can present my ideas in a way that is convincing. So I myself am a leftist, which which means left of capitalism. Um, you know things like socialism. Communism, anarchy, these are things that, that I put more stock in. Okay. Uh, this conversation will be interesting. I'm a corporatist. Okay. Um, not quite sure what you mean by a corporatist. Is, is that a form of, of capitalist? I'm not, not familiar with, with that use of the, the terminology, but that's cool. You know, and, and you're free to stick around as, as long as you can be civil and not try and derail things. Although, I mean, tonight's pretty loose, so probably go another half hour here just to let you know um and as as i was just i'll, I'll look at that in just oh. one second um just as i was mentioning i, I do put all of my stuff up on youtube so if you want to look at any of my back issues um form of an uh, form of anarchy oh okay is that similar to like syndicalism then or 
business over oh oh are you an ancap okay i mean that's cool too i'm not i'm never gonna ban someone just for for having a different set of beliefs um the one exception being something like fascism uh but ancaps i uh I, I apologize. I don't really consider that a form of anarchy myself, but that that's totally fine if you do. Um, and like I said, yeah, yeah, feel free to stick around. Oh, business over government. To me, that sounds like anarchy or uh, ANCAP, like anarcho-capitalist. Uh, but you're saying, no, that's not it. Okay. Fascism is just straight up. I'll, I'll wait for that to continue on there. Um, I think we're going to probably have to move on in the video here just so we can get it all in by the end of the stream. Neither. Uh, oh, you're saying fascism is neither left nor right. I would tend to disagree with that. Um, they believe in extreme conservatism, a return to uh, uh, an imagined state of, of things, you know, back when... The, the right people were in charge. There was a, a clear order of things. Um, they, they tend to intertwine religion more as a means of control and indoctrination more than, than necessarily even believing in it. Um, they're very, uh, let's see, antagonistic <laughs> is a way of putting it mildly to any sort of leftist ideology. They, they would kill... Like, I just take, for example, um, the Nazis, the actual Nazis, they killed all of the um, socialists and communists first. Uh, so they're very much opposed to intellectualism and to the left. True socialism only leads to communism or fascism. Uh, socialism cannot lead to fascism. It is completely different, different sort of thing. Um, and, oh, you're kind of messing with the, the sound there when you do that. Uh, socialism and communism are, our socialism and fascism are, are incompatible. They cannot work together. Um, they just, they just don't. You're like you, you, Socialism is about having democracy in the workplace, uh, workers owning the means of production, that sort of thing. Fascism is about strict control. Um, a very top-down, rigid system where you have a favored class of people, often a favored race of people, and it just doesn't work with socialism at all. Any of the tenets of it, you can't have equality and also strict um, uh, apartheid at, at, at the mildest and <laughs> genocide at the, at the very worst. Those, those two don't go together. I, okay, so you believe we have... Uh, common ground. Prager, you is nuts. I can definitely agree with you there. I don't. I don't like anything that they have to say. Um, I mean, as, as you continue, it, it. I mean, I'm just gonna say it. It sounds to me more like an anarcho-capitalist sort of ideology. Which again, I'm not gonna ban you for having an ideology like that. Um, I just tend to disagree with it. But hopefully, you'll stick around and and kind of at least consider some of the things that 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 we're presenting here and some of the ideas that we're putting up. So let's keep going. Oh, I meant to that they say the bootstrap thing. Okay, so the idea was, <laughs> just real quickly, uh, the idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps started out as a joke because it's like it's like the cartoon thing where you like you pull onto your shoelaces it. and lift both your legs up off the ground at the same time, defying gravity. It's an impossibility. It started as a joke. So it's still a cruel joke, just in a different way. Mm. They do, but meanwhile, as as her sister points out, yeah, Caitlin Bennett's mother was apparently on assistance. Now, for the record, I will say, I haven't independently verified any of the things in the clips. I am reacting to the stories uh, uh, and the things that she says. Obviously, we're going to give uh, uh, Abby the presumption of truth, uh, but none of this surprises me. I mean, this is all very par for the course. In fact, if you look at the states that time and time again need the most government assistance, it is also the states who vote the hardest against government assistance and can't stand welfare. It's always like Mississippi that needs the most, and yet they're all there voting for uh, people who want to give them none. Anyway, let's do the next one. Okay, so Caitlin posted this on her Facebook today. 
Okay, so just to read it for you, uh, it says, I have some very exciting news. No, I'm not pregnant, but my sister is. I have a new nephew on the way, and since this was a total surprise to our family, I wanted to hopefully fill my sister's Amazon registry with your help as a surprise too. I'm always posting registries for mothers in need and friends who have been ostracized by their family for their beliefs. All beliefs or your beliefs? Anyway, um, but I wanted to put my own family in the spotlight for once because they deserve it and no one deserves it more than my big sister. Thank you in advance for anyone who helps my sister prepare for her little guy. So that's what, uh, that, that's what uh, Caitlin has said. You almost called her Abby. I almost called her Abby. It's, it's <laughs> the ideologies are so similar. It's hard to tell sometimes. Well, I mean, she doesn't walk around with a gun strapped to herself, so basically, That's she's true. just asking like all of her followers to um, contribute to our oldest sister's baby shower and like buy her stuff, which is fine if she was in need. She lives in a half a million dollar house. She <laughs> has two living rooms, and let's just say she two is living on her, rooms. two living rooms. Two living. Why do you need two uh, living rooms? Actually, I shouldn't that. say that because my grandparents had like. Look at that though! What a grift. Well, <laughs> oh, okay, but like, a half million dollar house. That's. I yeah. mean, I don't care where you're on the country, unless you're like in downtown Manhattan. That's gonna be a nice place. Like, um, <laughs> it does not sound like she is wanting for anything, and to say like, oh, I always like to help out people in need, and have that be the basis for getting but by people help to. Out, I mean, other people help out the person that's right. actually needing things, not me personally. Yeah, it's, it's some good old uh, trickle up economics. You know, just help out the people who already <laughs> have a bunch. I have two living rooms, but only because it's uh, in my garage. Okay. <laughs> got converted living room in your garage is a little bit different than having a house that's yeah, big enough to say. have like a formal living room and then a, a, a common everyday living we room. We had that like. Yeah. Like, like, like I suppose. Had, like a sitting room where we had like the fireplace true. and we put up the Christmas tree in that space and like. True. I, I guess like my parents. the holiday, but. My parents too. They have a living room and then and they the have TV a basement. And the basement. Which is, yeah, we have a converted bedroom. Pretty much the same. The TV yeah. room with the recliners and then. So. <laughs> so yeah, but still half million dollar house. Keep that part in mind. And, and, and even having a house in general, owning your own home, that's, that's probably a good she indication that it, you it's don't probably your husband's well oh well i mean she still owns it in common then if she's married to the guy but <laughs> i don't know maybe anyway. anyway, on the table. Anyway, that's, that's 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 anyway she's, she's probably gonna, doing okay she needs to what? get in that kitchen and make him a sandwich oh my god don't say stuff like that. <laughs> uh okay let's see and now my poor truck is sitting permanently outside oh well that's that that's <laughs> the that's the give and take of uh making yourself uh, an extra place to hang out <laughs> um, but yeah, I, f I feel sorry for your truck. Sorry. <laughs> Although my, uh, my truck, my car has been outside for as long as we've had it or yeah. our, our car, I should say. Oh. Not, not mine. No. It's ours. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway. Times. I'm not a hundred percent sure because we all go through things. Yeah. That, that's a good point too. Owning your own home makes you in the top 80% automatically. Yeah, definitely. Maybe probably even higher. I, um, I'd say more than 50% of people, at least in my area, area we live in the, the Twin Cities. I think more than 50, I think more than 50% of people rent, it's probably closer to 60%. So, yeah. However, if that is the case, then why aren't Caitlin and my dad helping her? Caitlin herself makes so much money. When the little sure, Nas X true. stuff happened, she made 25 oh, grand. That, it's not the, it's not little nausea, it's little Nas X. Just so you can follow along on the, the closed captions. She made 25 grand? Yeah, from that controversy, I guess. Because uh, she has she's she has something, she has stuff behind a paywall now. So I think that's where you can hear like her real opinion about things. <laughs> and and stuff, if I remember correctly. So yeah, like I'm I'm sure she's gotten donations. Like who I don't do you know think if she you are that people have to pay you for your opinion? Like I will give that up. Well, for I mean, free. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of working towards that sort of thing. No, but, but. <laughs> like you would still share information with people whether they oh, have yeah. money or not. No, no, You're I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put things behind a paywall probably ever, or or if I did, it would be like you know if I ever had a oh. Patreon where I put things behind a paywall, it would be like Patreons get to hear it first or see it first. And then a week or two later, I would release it to the public. So it would never be, you know, 
complete. Oh, oh, you give me the, the, the yeah. suspect eyebrows on mm-hmm. that. But I'm not even close to that point yet. So. I'm giving you a hard time. Thanks, thanks a You're lot. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Rand that week. Ugh, Republicans that week she always made asking for handouts. Dang. Yeah, there's a funny irony to that too. That so yeah, yeah. I mean, this one is one that. <laughs> That's insane. Yep. Just by going after Little Nas X for for giving a lap dance to Satan in a video. Who cares? What a world we live in. <laughs> uh, I'll have you know, I'm dumb as a rock with celebs. By the way. Oh, okay. So Lil Nas X, um, just a rapper. He did that Old Town Road song, you know, Take My Horse to the Old Town Road. It was like a big hit a couple summers ago, something like that. Yeah. He recently put out a video. Um, he recently came out too. He, oh, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a gay man. Um, he, he put out a video where he was like being sexy around a CGI Satan. Mm-hmm. And conservative, like every part of conservative social media just blew up, lost their shit about it. Couldn't couldn't believe it, and Caitlin Bennett was one of the people at the front, making a big to do about it. So, and Caitlin Bennett herself is a celebrity for going around to college campuses and and asking people dumb questions, and then she'll edit it to make it look like her dumb conservative point was was true and stuff like that. She's very disingenuous. She only picks out people that are you know not prepared for a debate. Like if you showed up in just someone's house and like, hey, you're ready for a debate and stuff like that. And you had all these talking points laid out and they're like, oh, who are you? And stuff like that. You, you know, it's not going to be a fair debate just just by virtue of them not being prepared. And you are. Mm-hmm. But it's it's the sort of thing that that, that okay. happens. Uh, you are a deist. Satan ain't scare me. OK. <laughs> Satan doesn't really scare me either. So but apparently it was, it was a big deal for people like Kate, Caitlin, who. In my, in my opinion, is is a very thinly veiled, uh, basically Catholic fascist. That that's kind of her preferred brand. <laughs> uh, she legitimately tweeted, or or it was her partner with Liberty Hangout, which is her organization, her political organization. Um, she she would tweet out things like, uh, "Arise, Emperor Trump! Uh, we want Trump to be the dictator." You know, women shouldn't be able to vote. Like all these things, very, very fascist in her leanings. Yeah, that's gross. And then, but then she also wanted to. She's, Wait, she's, she's Catholic. Wait, she tweeted that women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like this is like. So I don't then, know. why does she vote? I don't know because she's a hypocrite. She shouldn't be allowed to vote. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't vote herself. I don't actually know that. What, particular like, detail. Oh, I'm just but... gonna rely. I'm just gonna rely upon you to vote for me. No. I mean, yeah. She, I mean, that's that seems like that's her ideal worldview, where the man would be the head of the household. He speak for the whole family. You know, very heteronormative. No room for any sort of same-sex coupling or or any. You know, certainly not any sort of polyamorous sort of situation. Um, and basically, the man would just run society. Everyone would have to be Catholic. That's Everyone would have to be white pretty much or at least never question white people you know stuff like that uh okay so i may be capitalist and conservative but this is kind of farther right than me well i mean at least you got that going for you (laughs) stick around you may find yourself on on an even further leftward journey you never know that's a little easier to demonstrate. I don't even need to do really any research to verify because I'm already aware of this. I'm aware that Caitlin comes from a very rich family, and I'm aware that Caitlin makes good money. In fact, uh, uh, while a good portion of it's on YouTube, she makes more of the money on her scam of a website that her entire YouTube channel has become advertising for. And it's just really funny here that you're sitting there going like, hey, guys, why don't you send my sister a gift? Because you're a... Ta- cool. So... You, so- you say, oh, this is this has all been Mumbo's trusted advisor, by the way. Um, you say, I have very different ideas or ideals for the economy and the actual government. I'd honestly prefer the Articles of Confederacy over the Union. I don't, you know what, I haven't studied that in so long that it would be difficult to um, even give an opinion on that. Um, but that's that's interesting, and maybe in future streams we can get more into that. But we're, we're going to try and wrap this up in about 15 minutes here. So I apologize if we're going to kind of skim over a few things and, and just try and get to the end of the video. But I do appreciate your input. Thank you very much for your, your comments. I think you should do that for the Friday stream sometime, maybe. What's that? Work through the... 
the, uh, the Articles of Confederation, the Constitution, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting to go for, but got to get through the conquest of bread first. So, but be there next time if you can. I, I look forward to having you. Thanks a lot for, for hanging out. Yeah, Tap to me and my, and meanwhile, you're literally like, there are people who are suffering and you, I'm not saying you're not allowed to benefit from your position because there are people who are suffering. I'm saying you don't then get to shit on people who then need to go and get help. Like, if you're going to have that much privilege and just exude it and ooze it everywhere, uh, uh, I mean, it's just so ironic that you have the audacity to ask people to give you more free stuff when you can afford everything, and then you're mad at people who are like, hey, you know what I need help on? Keeping a roof over my head or eating food. No depths of the next one. She puts off this image like she is religious and she's a Christian and she is all for um, Christianity and all this. However, they had to have two weddings. Uh, One was because her husband is extremely Catholic and his family had to have a Catholic wedding. Um, But because Caitlin's not religious, she had to have her own wedding because she's not Catholic. What? This is news to me. See, I thought she was an ultra Catholic nationalist as well, but it, it seems like now this is more from her husband's side that, that's been pushing this. I believe he's the one who helps her run the, the Liberty Hangout Twitter and, and stuff like that. Her British husband? She has a British husband? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was not even aware of that. I don't know if I've ever heard him speak about anything. But she had her own wedding because she's not Catholic? I thought she was super Catholic. She's always talking. I mean, she'll always bring up God when it when it is something she can like bludgeon her opponent with so god says hey. that's a bad idea i would hope that any <laughs> actual god would say it's a bad idea to just disingenuously use their their name to <laughs> hurt harm other people she always name dropping <laughs> oh i'm good with god yeah I'm, may have heard of him yeah this kid <laughs> jesus or- Christian or anything like that. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not. Um, but she portrays herself like she is. And the reason that I know that is because her mom asked me if I believed in God. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Am I going to get fired if I answer wrong? And she was like, no, because Caitlin's not. And we just don't understand because we took you kids to church every Sunday. Ooh. Yeah, this is one of those ones where it's like, well, first of all, we should say, for all we know, Caitlin. Hmm, let's see what you got to say now. I faintly hear Buddhist gods yelling at her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you look at, at most religions, they, they probably all religions at, at, at some point say, like, don't hurt other people and, and you know, be good and honest and stuff like that. These are very basic tenets of just human society. Well, and it's funny, though, too, because then, like, when there's war, they're very quick to defend it, like, Oh, of course, this because is, it's, it's you are uh, God's chosen right. soldiers and blah yeah. blah. Uh, it's, it, that's yep, that's the way they they keep everyone literally marching in the same direction and and not questioning what it, what their aims are and keeping the, the the focus away from what their their aims are. Uh, except tenth century Catholicism, the Crusades and all. Yeah, yeah, those those that version of Catholicism was not so happy about. Other people existing. Lynn has converted to Christianity, but uh, the story of needing the two weddings, a little bit telling. Also, you'll notice, like, do you remember that video she made where it started with, Dear Black Lives Matter? And then she started attacking a bunch of things that have nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. And included one was her husband popping in and saying, I will not be ashamed of believing in Jesus Christ, something along those things. And you're like, <laughs> Literally, most black people in America are Christians, so what are you actually on about? Black Lives Matter has a ton of Christians in it. Uh, anyway, uh, you'll notice that a lot of the more religious sentiments definitely come from her husband that are directly hmm. religious. Uh, and, but then there might be things like her pretending to be a trad wife, which if we do this interview with Abby, the first thing I'm going to ask is whether or not Caitlin has ever cooked anything ever. Because I don't know if you... Oh, that was a good video. Did you see that one? 
What? Where, where Caitlin Bennett was like trying to shame non trad wives by cooking a meal for her husband, and she yeah. was just awful at it. Mm-hmm. Did you see I, that one? Yeah, I think we watched. Did that we watch together. that today? Oh man, that was hilarious. That's like the thing, and it's like if that if you want to be a homemaker, if you want to cook all the meals because you truly enjoy cooking. Mm-hmm. And that brings you joy, mm-hmm. then you should live that life. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and not, not if you're not only if you are the wife in in a mm-hmm. heterosexual pairing, but th- that should be able to be an option for Both. a man as well. You like cooking more I than like cooking, I do, yeah. and which is why I do it more often than you do. Right, and that's I mean, totally fine. We both like, work jobs. We both do chores. Yeah. You know, we kind of try to balance things out, and that and that's where really the key right. is. As long as things are balanced in a relationship, it shouldn't just be one person kicking back. And one person, you know, mm-hmm. busting your ass all day. <laughs> if you can't cook a potato, you can't cook anything. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a good. That's standard a that's a good measure. measure. Sure. Um, I don't remember what Caitlin tried to cook, but we should look at more of her videos. It was asparagus, I think. And I think maybe maybe next week weekend we'll do something like that. What do you? What do you think? We can actually dive, go to the source of some of these What, what is it going to be? Trad Wife Sunday? Whew, trad Wife Sunday. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> It'll be fun, though. Yeah, fun. <laughs> Good conversation. Uh, that's why I love Irish food. <laughs> Potato vodka. Yeah, well, potatoes multifaceted. Excuse me. You all remember that video, but I loved when she did her, like, the liberals hate me for being a yeah, trad like, wife for my husband and cooking. Both, no, we have to do trad Sunday. Cause yeah, that'll be fun. They all wear aprons and stuff, and it's like, you know what, bitch? I know you don't dress like that normally. Oh, of course You not. don't wear an apron when you're cooking at home. I don't oh, yeah. wear an apron. They totally had just dirtied the, these pots and pans for the first time ever. I'm right. sure they eat out all the time, which is fine. Yeah. You know, especially you, you got the money to do it. Sure, sample, yeah, sample. Live your other life. That's fine, but don't pretend that you're back at home, like whipping up a home cooked meal for everybody. Right. If that's not who you are, yeah, it's so I, obvious. I go to the farmers market and yeah. cook fresh produce for the week, and oh, I also make a very specific food schedule. Just uh, tying it back to the, the the Handmaid's Tale, it reminds me of all the the, the handmaids and the Marthas going out to the, the get the fresh stuff. produce to, mm-hmm. so they can make handmade dinners for. All of their commanders <laughs> and all the stuff like that. Like yeah. that, that really is the fantasy for a lot of these people. And Just again, that. if that's your truth and that's what brings you joy, sure. should be no problem with that. Do it. No one should be prevented from living the the life mm-hmm. that gives them the most joy. Like I like baking, mm-hmm. and you benefit from I absolutely benefit, <laughs> benefit from, from baking. baking. Speaking of which, how about, how about uh, do some Memorial Day cookies? Maybe. 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 I know we do the puppy chow tonight. And yeah. We'll maybe, maybe we'll save it for next weekend. Yeah, yeah. we could make. Don't want to have too many. I know I haven't made cookies stuff. in like. A I know very long I've been time. craving them. She makes the best I, like everything cookies basically. They're like monster cookies. I won't lie, I do make a pretty good cookie. Yeah, you know, and my family, especially my dad, can attest to that. Like, he loves your cookies. He always like every gathering. Oh, you can make your cookies again. Yeah, they're yeah. chocolate chips, pecans, oats, rice krispies. And toasted coconut, mm-hmm. and I'm not skimpy with the chocolate. Like we oh, put no, a no, good no. amount they, of chocolate they, in they're there. Good chocolate. And Zach's family is vegan, mm-hmm. so they're vegan cookies. But please don't let that put you off because they're still very good. Mm-hmm. And you no, can eat yeah. the dough, you and even, you don't you wouldn't get even sick. notice. You won't get sick from eating the cookie dough because right. there's not rice in not, not, not eggs and and other dairy products, so they they keep just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. But we really got to. Or yeah, got four and minutes then shows a montage of her <laughs> cooking, having clearly never through. handled three minutes left utensils for cooking, to tools done. for cooking, uh, and clearly never chopped an yeah, onion exactly. before or used tongs to stir pasta. It was all horrible. And anyway, I'll be very interested to find out. Uh, I wouldn't be oh, surprised right. to find she out that she is that kind of hypocrite. Box. Though my <laughs> guess is she probably by now pretends at the right. very least the to be religious. Also, you'll notice that Liberty line. Hangout, yeah, right. which they call the actually stir. both. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was too loud. In my ears. But... Oh, I was just saying. I would not normally use tongs to stir pasta, but if that's all that was clean and nearby, you darn right, I'm going to use yeah, the tongs for to sure. stir the pasta. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But I mean, she had a pristine, immaculate kitchen that probably her maids clean all the time. Oh, right. <laughs> Sickness no stop me, only back pain. Okay. 
I don't know which, which part you're referring to there, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll continue on. Back We're almost pain done. slows me down too. It's all right. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Both of them, even though her husband Liberty hang out, her husband's existence does not matter to that at all. If her husband just disappeared, teleported to another universe or whatever, Liberty Hangout would go on because the only people, person that people actually care about being at Liberty Hangout Ooh, is Caitlyn. I feel like that's a good for point. For worse, I was going to say for... Sorry. Sure. I'm just saying, like, if... Oh, you're someone, sure. someone else from Cookie Dough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not my Cookie Dough. Yeah, not her Cookie Dough. Um, like, if something happened to you, mm-hmm. I hope it doesn't, but, like, yeah. my life would continue on pretty much... Like it does now. Oh, okay. like no, 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 no. I'm just uh-huh. saying that, like, I'm Go not ahead, 100- dig yourself out. Fine. Just keep no, playing. what were you gonna say? That, like, <laughs> I'm an independent woman and my life would sure. still continue. And well, I, yeah, I would, would not I would hope that you would go like, on and, and have a good and fulfilled life. You, <laughs> I, hope, I hope I wouldn't totally break you as a person. If, if, like, I would be sad for a long yeah. time, but like. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know what you. I get it now. What you were trying to say. Like it would not be in like we help each other. We are mm-hmm. stronger as one unit, but sure. not like. Oh uh, yeah, there's there's no one thing that like either of us. Like, I have no idea how to do the dishes because I'm a man or anything like that. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's what they're... Okay, I, th- that Maybe context that. makes it make a lot more sense <laughs> than just like, if you died, I'd just keep going. I mean, I would. Oh, 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 for better you or for worse, too. just Come for on. worse, but that is the that is the case. I would be but you'll pretty see broken from the Twitter, so uh, yeah. uh, a lot of very Catholic <laughs> sentiments that are pretty ridiculous, which is funny because the Pope would not like either of them. On to the next. Okay, so can somebody get me an interview? Because I'm ready to spill all the tea. Like, all of it. I was uh, questioning myself every day, like, how much is too much? Don't push the envelope. But after today, I'm done. I'm done keeping family secrets. I'm done holding back on the childhood trauma. I'm done being worried about being sued. I'm done being worried about cease and desist letters. I have so much more to say. That would be cease and desist, not ceased and desist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have so much more to unpack. So if anybody's interested, I got a lot more tea to spill. <laughs> right now, this mug is full of water, but I'd love to be full of tea. That interview you want, Abby, obviously I've already spilled the uh, spilled the bean. I wasn't expecting it to be so ha- uh, to happen so quickly. It's already something that I believe is in the works. We've made introductions, talked about talking about that it. That should be interesting. Uh, and so hopefully that's something I'm going to be able to show you all soon. But my goodness, I so empathize with the other parts of that where she's talking about I'm done like worrying about not talking about the abuse, not talking about my childhood, mm. not talking about my family secrets. Because that was a moment I had to hit myself. Because again, remember... In my family, I say remember, many of you may not know this, but in my family, we had to consistently recite the phrase, the number one rule is loyalty. That was our number one family rule. And that was the thing that we had to recite Mm -hmm. and say and demonstrate. And at times, uh, we had to demonstrate... What is being said? Because it's hard to follow. Okay, so so he he said he can relate to not caring about... um, Getting blowback for for whatever their, their whatever the tea they're spilling, speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. Because in his family, his number one rule that they had to recite on the regular was uh, be loyal to the family. Basically, it's like wow, that sounds like a cult. Like I don't well, I mean, know Jimmy's backstory compared, as well as you no, do. He's but... compared his family to a cult, so oh, that makes wow. perfect sense. That it's like that's, that's just some sad stuff. That's terrifying. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. My family and I are on complete opposite ends of the political spectrum. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's intense, but we just don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's what your family's that's, come to. And that, that, I mean, it works. Yep. You know, it avoids problems. Mm-hmm. It's probably not ideal, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Whatever. We're not there that long, Can usually, that, you know. to right. wage war. 
Yeah. Like, we've all decided it's better to be a family than to... Uh, Argue. To be right. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's nice, dude. I'm sorry. That's but... real nice. Now, now who's in trouble? I'm not just saying it from my side. Now, I'm sure now... they. I'm sure they would feel the same thing. Like now it's, who's it's, in trouble? It's, they no, they too. Huh. I'm sure would say it's better not to argue about the dumb stuff that Zach and Amanda say than to you know. I'm sure from their perspective, yeah, that's what it course, is. Of course, of so. course. Yeah. I didn't ask anyone. Okay. Straight it. Almost done. In Almost the done. face of. If the choice is being loyal or doing the right thing, you always had to be loyal. Oh. That was that was the most important thing, uh, which is something that you'll be able to read more about in my upcoming yeah. book, which will probably get written in. Fundamentalist Church. What's up? He's from a fun, fundamentalist church. Is he from? Uh, he's in Las. Is he in Las Vegas or is he? In, he's in no, Colorado. He's in Colorado. Right? Yeah, is he from he's there from originally? Utah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now that's all starting to fall into place. Yeah. It all makes sense now. Yeah. Was he from a, a Mormon family? I yeah, I don't recall him having said that specifically, but I get that vibe. Jeez. You know, special know underwear and stuff. I know there's a lot of those stuff. very, very patriarchal families with the sister wives and all that stuff. Thing. I ain't going to be nobody's sister wife. <laughs> well, that's because your sister's already getting married off. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. I'm sorry. I'm gonna catch so much hell for that one. Sorry. Released one day. I'm I'm promoting something <laughs> that might be at least a year away from release. Maybe more. Uh, all right. Thank you all so much for watching. That's it for me. Hey, Look forward to, to more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you're to not going to want to miss that interview. I also have other collabs in the works Jimmy right now. Uh, uh, I'm working on confirming a couple of them that yeah. are going to be amazing. So hit that subscribe button. Remember, if you love the show, share the show. That's all for me. Fade to black. What are you going to rave this uh, week? Um, I don't know. Ooh. I thought we were done. We are done. It just, it auto plays. All right. That was part of the playlist that I had. We can save it um, for next week. Yeah, I'll save it for next week. Save it for next time. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun tonight going through that video with you. I think we've Sorry, we learned, only get through learned. like one a week. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's just that's just the nature of the beast. So many jumping off points. Mm -hmm. But this one was fun. Um, and yeah, again, you can look for my theory stream this this Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, right here on Twitch, we will be having um, a theory stream. We're going through part two of chapter 12 of The Conquest of Bread. And my guests will again be Sean Skulls of the Tribunus Plebis podcast um, to go through that and, and kind of talk about whatever political topics come up through the chapter. So far, we both really enjoyed uh, the, the first half of it, the part one. So look forward to that. And then otherwise, we will we'll see you again next Friday. We'll probably be back together uh, doing a stream. Sunday, you mean? Sun oh, I, said, I keep doing that. Next Sunday, doing doing the stream of just kind of whatever videos we we feel like doing. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll be coming up with our own really our cool show. dance. Oh, we're not going to steal someone else's line. It's our show. No, no. So it's our choice. Yes, our show. Our uh, Yeah, our show, our choice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's an appropriately different spinoff of, of their... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway I hope you enjoy what you saw tonight um, thank you all in the audience for hanging in, in with me I'm going to go ahead and raid you to another Twitch streamer now